we have to make our mint condition ramp truck actually reliable. Um, yeah, it's broke again. Our first issue is the fact that we have incorrect ignition timing for this thing. When we finally put a timing light on it after we got home from our 5,200 mile road trip, we realized the base ignition timing was set to zero. It wasn't advanced, it wasn't retarded, it was zero. Which, you know, I'd like to see some advance in it. Uh, the factory spec on this motor is eight degrees of advance, so we'd like to see a little more there. But more concerning than that was the centrifugal advance system of the distributor, which is the mechanical means for advancing the ignition timing as the engine accelerates, was only adding 12 degrees of advance and our vacuum advance is completely non-functioning. Vacuum advance would normally add another 15 to 20 degrees on top of the centrifugal advance so that at light throttle in cruising situations, this thing should get better mileage because you'd have 30 or 40 degrees of advance and the moment you really hammered on the throttle and the engine vacuum went away, it would go back to the mechanical advance, which should be about you know, if your base timing is eight and you've got, let's say 20 degrees of mechanical, you'd have 28 degrees of timing going down the road. Right now, going down the road, whether we're wide open with no engine vacuum or part throttle, we just have 12, which is not enough. Um, will fixing this substantially improve our fuel economy? Eh, a little bit. I mean, we're not gonna get another five miles per gallon, but every little bit will help. But more importantly, we're gonna have more power and better acceleration going up hills. So we're gonna address that. Now normally, I'd be a cheap bastard and I'd start looking into a new vacuum module and I'd start looking into why the mechanical feature of this is not advancing the timing, but I have a used MSD Pro Billet distributor that came out of the OG Ramp Trucks 454. So this is an electronic distributor. It's got an ignition module built into it. It actually has a built-in rev limiter that uh, you can set by revving the engine to whatever RPM you want and then grounding the gray wire. Uh, it has a tack output, it has a really good aftermarket coil, vacuum advance also. So this should solve those mechanical problems we're having and will reset the timing. And with any luck, that cures our dieseling issue if it doesn't, then we've got to start looking at other things like, you know, is this fuel line getting way too hot? You know, are we boiling the fuel? Is there a bunch of carbon buildup in the motor and on the spark plugs? Not sure. We haven't done any of those things yet, but we will. Okay, moment of truth. These are the spark plugs that were in the engine when we bought Square Force One. So these have a ton of miles on them, and by ton, they have at least 5,300, which is about the mileage we put on it driving cross country. And first thing I'm gonna look for here is wetness. And wetness will either be raw fuel or oil. Next thing I'm gonna look for is mechanical damage. You know, are there any ground straps that are smashed? Ooh, like that gap is significantly smaller than the other ones, but it doesn't look like it's been hit. It looks like whoever installed these did a piss poor job of gapping them, because that gap is giant. Let's see here if I can show you. So there's that gap there. On number two, there's that gap there on number seven. And they are different, a lot different. And then as for whether or not this engine is running rich or lean, that is the benefit of having a wide band O2 gauge. In real time, you can see how it's running. When you look at spark plugs, especially ones you've driven many miles on, it's hard to read them because when you idle, especially if you're running rich, it'll get all sooty in here and then it's difficult to tell how was it actually running you know this is about where the timing mark is it's right before the bend um, which means it doesn't have a lot of timing in it if it had a lot of timing in it it would burn the coating and the color would come all the way down here around the bend the more advanced you put in it the further this mark moves it will keep going down 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 all the way into the threads there so not a lot of timing in this motor and it's hard to tell you from spark plugs, is it running rich, is it running lean? I don't know because like I said, these spark plugs have a lot of miles on them and a lot of idling time. So we'll put a fresh set in here. And to be honest, that may help our dieseling problem because these are really sooty. You know, that one there is 
really, really sooty and full of carbon buildup. And that could very easily cause pre-ignition. You know, if you've got a bunch of carbon buildup in the chambers or on the valves or on the spark plugs, that could make this thing diesel. Okay, next step. Plug wires are in, plugs are on. We left out number one because we're gonna find top dead center and then verify our balancer and pointer are correct. So the first thing we're gonna do is put our finger in the hole, bump the motor over until we feel compression. That'll tell us that the piston is on its way up with both valves shut. Then after that, we'll shove this aluminum welding rod inside the cylinder on top of the piston and we'll put a breaker bar on the crank bolt and turn it by hand to get it exactly at the top of the dwell period. Then we'll verify our timing pointer and our balance remarks. Okay, go ahead. Whew. All right, so it started sucking. The piston's on its way down. Okay, keep going, Vin. Whoop. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. You're getting closer. All right. We're close. Now let me go look at the balancer and see where it's at. We should be close and then we can move it by hand with a breaker bar. Okay. Yeah. So get the camera down there. And if you look closely, you can see the balancer and you can see the timing pointer. And uh, now we'll move it by hand. So there's what our welding rod looks like couple of bends to get it in there. The goal is to put the tip of it on top of the piston and then while Newburn was rotating the motor over clockwise and counterclockwise I was able to watch the rod move up as the piston traveled up the cylinder to top dead center and then I was able to watch it move back down. Once I split the difference between those two motions I looked down and lucky for us we can now remove our distributor and drop the new one in and point the rotor at the number one piston over here on the driver's side of the motor, and then we can wire the distributor accordingly. <sighs> Out with the old, in with another old, but slightly newer one. That's pretty good though. If you look at the wear pattern, it's right in the middle, so that's good news. You can actually verify the new distributor measure the distance from here to the middle of the other gear, and then that should tell you whether where it's going to wear. But, uh, yeah, that looks like it's wearing good. Too bad this doesn't work. So, is there a way to troubleshoot the vacuum advance to see why it's not working? Well, yeah, I mean, the first thing you do is verify you actually have vacuum. So, what we did is while the engine was running, we disconnected the hose and put our thumb over the port in the base of the carburetor um, and we verified that was a good source of vacuum so it was connected to the right spot it did have vacuum going to it it's just physically not functioning there's probably something wrong with the diaphragm in here and like i said if i didn't have this laying around i'd fix this but we have this laying around and we know it works so we'll just install this okay distributors in caps going on We verified TDC. We put the motor at eight degrees advanced, drop the distributor in, pointed the rotor towards the number one spark plug, and then made that terminal number one. And now we will wire accordingly. So this is standard Chevrolet firing order. One, eight, four, three, six, five, seven, two. The rotor rotating clockwise. All right, all right, back together. First fire up. Ready? Sure, go ahead and hit it. Please work. Look at that. Started right up. That's how it works when you do it properly. I will set our timing and go for a test drive where she ends up at with our mechanical and vacuum advance connected. Okay, go ahead. Okay. All right, so we have 30 
degrees of total timing right now. We have 10 degrees of base timing. We have about 11 centrifugal advance and another 10 degrees of back in advance. And we're not dieseling. <laughs> Calling that a win. We're not dieseling anymore. Thing runs good now. It's been really smooth. And we're not dieseling. All right. We need a road test now. Let's go drive it. It's Thursday, several days before High Rod Power Tour. We are leaving Georgia, heading to North Carolina. And we've made some modifications to the truck. We've put some ignition timing in it. We put a Gear Star Level 4 4L80E overdrive transmission in this pig. And uh, we want to know can we get better than five and a half miles per gallon? Which is what we got um, when we drove cross country back in February. So, same setup, blast me inside, tools, all that stuff. Are we gonna do better? What do you think? We got all our merch. Well, we had that last time too. No, no we're not gonna do any better. Really? I say we get six and a half. That's a whole mile per gallon better. On a 5,000 mile trip, that's a thousand bucks saved, dude. Well, with me driving, maybe four. Damn. Don't look at me like that. There is no air conditioning back here. Well, Be yeah. nice or I'm gonna ride three wide up front with you guys. <laughs> it's 60 degrees in here and he's complaining. It's, I say it's 59 degrees in here. It's the vinyl bench seat. It's block, block but lay, your, lay that shedding blanket down and then lay on top of it. It might have a cool barrier in this that way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Okay, it's Arctic you. up here. I could take my tea and hold it up here and it'll keep it cold. Are we if there I, yet? Oh my God, why are you talking? We've only been like seven miles. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. We used half a tank yet. Or we would use a full tank at 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll map it, and you're right. We used to go 100 miles on a tank. We've gone probably over 80. We're not even half a tank yet. Dude, this thing's getting way good gas miles compared to what we thought it was going to be. Overdrive like, trans, and we put a little bit of timing advance in the motor. Yeah. She's happy. Seven miles. How many gallons did we burn? Nine point eight four three. Ooh, someone do the math on that. Okay. Because that seems better. What is uh, it? How many miles? Eighty-seven miles. Eight point eight. Dude, we went from five and a half to eight point eight miles per gallon. Yeah, cool? yeah. Wow. Dude, I hold on. Uh, reset the triple odometer push in and spin it oh my god we just got over three miles per gallon better dude we don't we're pretty much getting nine miles to the gallon that's incredible i would have never that's incredible. That. <laughs> oh happy days saving money dang well we're in north carolina drove 287 miles square force one and guess what believe it or not at one point we got nine miles per gallon in this thing we got 8.8 .8 on another segment the worst we got going through some mountains was six and a half miles per gallon that means we put about 5,000 miles on this thing we'll have nearly paid for that gear star transmission we stuck in there it's like a whole new truck and it's quieter 
and we're almost in double-digit fuel economy territory.